welcome to part two of the two-part series entitled Noah Vegetarian, Venerated Antediluvian Patriarch and Messenger of God. Noah was chosen by God to be the father of a new humankind at a time when the world became so wicked that it led to the Great Flood. Heeding divine instructions, he built a giant ark that would protect him, his family, and representatives from all species of animal people during the disaster. The Holy Quran recounts how desperately Noah, or Nu, had beseeched the people to find refuge in the true path of Allah, but to no avail. He cried, O oh my Lord, I have called to my people by night and by day, but my call only increases their flight from the true path. And every time I have called to them that you may forgive them, they have thrust their fingers into their ears, covered themselves up with their garments, grown obstinate and given themselves up to arrogance. So I have called to them aloud, Further, I have spoken to them in public and secretly in private. Noah completed the ark, and he took his family, the believers, aboard, along with the animal people. The rain fell for forty days and nights, during which the ark floated safely above the flood waters which rose above even the highest mountains. Every living being not sheltered in the ark perished. When the rain stopped, the water level slowly started to recede. Noah sent a dove person in search of dry land. The dove person returned, as it could not find any place to make a nest. A week later, Noah sent the dove person out again. This time, it returned with an olive branch, meaning the water level had come down. When Noah sent the dove person out a third time, it did not return, which was a sign that there was dry land. At the end of 150 days, the ark rested upon the mountains of present-day Turkey. It is believed that the ark landed either on Mount Ararat or Mount Judy. The Holy Quran cites that Noah then prayed to Allah, O oh my Lord, enable me to disembark with your blessings, for you are the best of all to enable us to disembark. A year after the onset of the flood, the earth had completely dried, allowing Noah and the occupants of the ark to disembark. The animal people went off to repopulate the earth. According to the book of Genesis, God told Noah, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. God made a rainbow as a promise that Hez would never destroy the earth by flood again. In 1990, Supreme Master Ching Hai mentioned Noah's family after the flood. In the Bible, there is a story about different languages. Some of you know. After uh, Noah's flood, Noah's family grew into many different families and grew into different uh, in big nations. But they were very harmonious because they spoke the same language. And because God has promised that he wouldn't destroy the earth again and bless them, Noah's family. Due to his love for Noah, the most beloved, faithful, pleased, Besides, now you understand why one person enlightened and favored by God, five, six, seven generations are 
liberated. And it's even stated in the Bible. I don't say it alone. No? I just come to realize it now. Many generations of Noah's family are prosperous and healthy, happy, and have no problem whatsoever. And now, after they have enjoyed this uh, blessing for many, many hundreds of years, probably they forgotten somewhat about God's uh, uh, blessing and power, like some of us now. According to the Hebrew Bible, book of Genesis chapter 10, verse 9, Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Hapheth, dispersed into many lands after the flood and became recognized as the ancestors of the nations of the world. In medieval Christianity, Noah's three sons were generally considered as the founders of the populations of the three known continents, and Hapheth considered to be the progenitor of the European peoples. Islamic literature describes Shem as the next prophet after his father. Shem's descendants are believed to have populated Asia, and Ham's descendants Africa and adjoining parts of Asia. The Bible refers to Egypt as the land of Ham. In Christianity, Noah's Ark symbolizes the Church, where no salvation is possible outside of it. The Dove person sent out by Noah from the Ark heralds the Holy Spirit moving upon the baptismal waters, symbolizing divine reconciliation. The olive branch that the Dove person brings back to Noah is a symbol of salvation and the restoration of peace. The rainbow represents harmony with nature as God's promise never to destroy the earth again with a flood. Noah passed away at the age of 950 years. He was the last of the antediluvian or pre-flood patriarchs. The maximum human lifespan, as depicted by the Bible, gradually diminishes thereafter, from almost 1,000 years to the 120 years of Moses. In the Lutheran Church's calendar of saints, Noah's Day of Commemoration is November 29. Noah has often been compared to the son of Prometheus and Pronoia Deucalion in Greek mythology. Deucalion was warned of the flood by Zeus and Poseidon, so he built an ark, filling it with living beings. He gave thanks to the gods and took advice on how to repopulate the earth. At the end of his voyage, Deucalion sent out a pigeon person that returned with an olive branch. Josephus, first century Jewish historian, used the story of Deucalion as evidence that Noah's story actually happened. In the Hindu chronicle Matsya Purana, Lord Vishnu ordered the virtuous king Vaivasvata Manu to construct a huge boat with all species of animal people and plants to escape the great deluge. When the water receded, the boat rested on the top of the Malaya mountains. Sir William Jones, the founder of the Asiatic Society of Bengal, identifies Manu with Noah. In Mormon theology, Noah was the angel Gabriel prior to his birth and then lived his mortal life as the patriarch. Noah and Gabriel are regarded as the same individual under different names. It is the Mormon belief that after his passing, Noah returned to earth as Gabriel and appeared to the prophet Daniel to teach him about the second coming. Noah became the means by which divine transforming powers, including saving covenants and ordinances, are extended to people during a period of dispensation. In Genesis Apocryphon, one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, there are about 20 fragments that refer to Noah. In 2008, Supreme Master Jin Hai explained how we can only find true protection in the God within each of us. 
So I do hope that in any of the emergency situations, we can all act like Noah here, and that God always be our comforter and refuge, because nothing else really <laughs> that's safe for us. Huh? As I told you already, maybe the water rises from the sea. Okay, we might think mountain is safer, but who knows? If the water rises too high, the mountain give in also, yeah, and erode it. Yes, too much raining, the mountain will also run away. You know, damage, ruin, yeah, or um, too much water and uh, all the earth becomes different shape and broken or earthquake, everything, and who knows, uh, the fire will come out from the earth. Some hidden volcanoes, you know, might be open. Anything happen. You never can say that mountain is safer than the sea or the land is safer than the sea. If you have to die in whatever way, you have to, right? Yeah. Except you take refuge in the spiritual power, in the God within you, nothing else is really safe. With heartfelt gratitude, we pray that the story of Noah, prophet and venerated messenger of God, may inspire all of humanity to turn to their God power within, leading a caring, conscientious life for the well-being and upliftment of all beings on earth. People think of veganism as a diet of sacrifice, but it's really not. I eat a wider variety of foods now than before I quit eating animal people products. Dan Piraro, vegan. Wonderful viewers, thank you for your loving company today. 